Um, this is part of a, a weekly webinar or e-seminar series that we've been hosting for product. This is our favorite. It's a patented formulation designed to relieve stress in plants. And it does this both directly and indirectly. Um, it will directly activate genes to uh, start the stress defense mechanism inside the plant. Uh, you'll see enhanced root growth you know, from the formulation and the nutrient content. And these roots are the brains of the plant. And the brains of the plant help the plant grow better. It makes the plant make the right decisions to avoid stress. So you're getting this direct effect of the gene activation, indirect effect of a strong, healthy plant. It's less um, susceptible to stress. And you get this really cool formulation effect. So BioForge, on the next slide, I'll tell you what it is. It's a diformal urea. I'll show you a picture. But for the sake of argument here, diformal urea is not really used as a nitrogen and a potash source. Its structure is very much an antioxidant. And I'll go through the story, but the antioxidants in the plant are what signals stress. It's a hormone of its own. And BioForge is able to capture that oxidative molecule and dissolve it into basic nutrients the plant can take up. So BioForge is going to directly activate the stress pathway in the plant. It's going to increase roots to avoid stress better. And it will directly attack the signal that causes ethylene. What the farmer is going to see is improved root growth, enhanced shoot development. Um, we're really seeing a less stretching. The plants are stopped stretching for the sky. They look happier and healthier. And this results in more yield. BioForge is really awesome because it's basically one of the first chemicals I've ever seen that can actually manage the environment. Very cool. So it's a reaction of two naturally occurring molecules. We take formic acid. Uh, those of you on the line, probably some of you, know my, uh, my ant story from the fields out in South America. I was actually giving this talk. And uh, we're talking about formic acid when I stepped on an ant's nest. And they came up my legs. My pants were flying in the air. Everybody thought I was joking around. But I got mauled by ants. What makes it burn is formic acid. When the ant stings you, it injects formic acid. So we take that naturally occurring molecule and we mix it with urea. And most of us have used or will use urea. Uh, you know, animal byproducts, basically. This is... Uh, well, we'll not get into that. When you mix the two together, they form this bond. And this chemical reaction actually takes energy from the atmosphere to form all these strong, powerful bonds. And it's this molecule right here that directly stops that reactive oxygen stress. So it, the oxygen, reactive oxygen will bind right here. And then it wraps. And then you basically have urea and benign byproducts. So this is by diformal urea. Um, we do have patents. And um, actually, a, a, this is a, a molecule, a new discovered molecule. And we were able to get a chemical abstract number. So uh, we're real excited about this. BioForge is a go-to product. So enough, enough of that. Too much detail, right? Now, what? Why does it help? What are we doing? It sounds really good. So BioForge. This application here, most of you'll find a lot of our research. Uh, we, are, we are field guys. So you'll see a lot of pictures like this off the back of our trucks. Um, as Jerry says, never trust a man without a shovel. And uh, we live by that. So all of our reps, you'll find to have shovels. Even, uh, even in the delta down there, Rick, he has a little shovel. But you can use BioForge. This application here was an inferro at four ounces per acre, right with the starter. And that was followed with BioForge as a foliar with this uh, herbicide at the 12 ounce. So you're right now in between these two applications, depending on where you are. So you can start, you can get that inferro, that seed treatment out. But always follow up with the herbicide, and I'll explain why. When you compare that to the untreated control, it's, it's a completely different uh, uh, picture here. Look at this. So you have long, deep root systems. Look at how white and healthy these guys are. The stalks on these are fatter. I mean, measurably fatter with a caliper. Just density, all this other good stuff. 
when you think of this, you know, this, this application is a foliar, it's going on young plants. So you're getting a lot of the bioforage to hit the soil. And I get a question a lot of the times, you know, oh, is this really efficient? What's going on to the bioforage that touches the bare soil? Well, you'll see with these root systems, as it develops a dense canopy, you'll have 100% root cover of that field. So these roots will actually grow into the bioforge that you sprayed and touched bare soil. So it will stay there long enough so that the plant, as it grows, can take up more of it. So even though we don't have full canopy closure at this application, this herbicide pass, we're still going to get good effectiveness from the bioforge. And uh, that's because of this root interception that we'll see. Um, BioForge works on lots of crops. Uh, I do a lot of the, the research work here. And uh, I, I mean, I don't, think, I don't think there's a crop that people eat that we don't spray. Uh, you name it, we spray it. Here was just a seed treatment. So we put BioForge out at the two ounce per carat weight right here on winter wheat. And by the next year, when you come out, <clears throat> come out there in April for your green up sprays, you see better density, more crowns, more tillers, and all that other good stuff. So then with your green up spray, you have all this stored energy we need to mobilize. So with your nitrogen, when you're putting out that spray, throw some stimulate in. And that's the second half of this talk. I'll teach you how to use that. But Look at what BioForge can do. And these winters can be particularly harsh. So BioForge is going to put more carbohydrate into the crown and below ground parts, which is buffered. It's like a winter coat to these plants. You keep your carbs up here, the frost is going to burn them off, especially once we get up near Steve and the Dakotas with Dave. But you put your carbs here, they're going to be protected till the spring. And then we could tease all of that out with a green up spray. So at a very modest rate, we're able to get very dramatic results. You just wait. If we get a frost or something out there, there'll be no difference. Now, well, this will be dead, and this will be green. Here's some later season uh, photos. Now, this farmer was you know, more low maintenance. He did have some in furrow equipment, uh, but he didn't want to come back and spray. So this was a single application of bioforage in furrow at the full rate of one pint. Uh, per acre, next to an untreated control. So bioforage, you'll typically see used at less of a rate. So we like to go at low rate multiples, and I have some data to present to you about that. But these low rate multiples are sometimes not practical when the farmer's not driving over the field. So if we don't have access to spray the field, we just put down the full rate up front in furrow, and it is giving you season-long results. So if you can't use a low-rate multiple, get the full rate down. If you're only spraying once, use a pint. Here's your untreated versus your bioforge. Uh, doesn't really need much monitor of explanation. That's a striking difference. Bioforge is managing the stress in the field, and you're getting a much nicer plant. Uh, this is Larry. Uh, this is what, Nightingale Farm, Larry? So this is one of my all-time favorite pictures of BioForge. Here was a very aggressive program. This is a typical program that you'll see. Um, this resembles a lot of those yield record programs that uh, we've been getting so much press about these last three years. So here, see we had the 8 ounce. I knew we were spraying a few times, so we broke it up. But this is BioForge at 8 ounces three times using an inferro, a herbicide, and then a tassel fungicide type application. We also threw in Excite, and I have your, talk to your local representative and they can explain Excite. Excite, we use uh, that next application, so I'm not going to be talking about it here, but in future webinars I will. For immediate questions, you can either hit that chat section or you can uh, talk to your local rep. But just look at the uniformity and vigor of this circle versus this pivot. I mean, they're totally different. Um, this is because of our BioForge. It's able to manage the stress. And you see these areas of chlorosis and damage. Um, 
you know, hard to identify from the sky, you start walking those fields and you're literally breathing in spider mites. So what happened here is, you know, Bioforge is not toxic. It's not going to kill spider mites. But it reduces the environmental stress on these plants. And you get a stronger plant. That's that second bullet point in the first slide. Stronger plant is more tolerant to disease and pests than, uh, than weaker plants that are under drought or heat or whatever it might be. So this here has a noticeably bigger root system. Those brains are able to pump you know, more chemicals into the plant. And then those little biological chemical factories are able to ward off pest and disease. So uh, still, this is an all-time stolen favorite. And um, it shows you what we can do in, in just about everyone's backyard. So why, why is there oxidative stress? Why does BioForge even work? I talked about how it was an antioxidant. It wasn't really nitrogen and potassium. It was the structure of how the nitrogen and the potassium was bound together. So when a plant's functioning, it's really a solar panel. That's where most of its energy is going to come from, or at least that's what the agronomy textbooks tell us. So as plants take in the energy from the sun, that's a, a high amount of energy. We all know about that. Uh, go to the beach, um, you know, take your shirt off for the first time that year and sit out there for a while. And you would all tell me how powerful the sun can be. It burns our skin. So plants, they can't really move around and put sweatshirts on like we can. As the sun comes down, it needs to efficiently capture that energy or it's going to cause stress. It's going to burn. It's going to cause oxidative particles to bounce around this cell and screw up these cycles. These thycoloids and membranes are made out of lipids. Lipids are fats. So as it gets hot or as it gets cold, these lipids change structure. They become uh, weak or they become rigid. So when the light comes in, it can't transfer the energy correctly, and some of it pops off as free radicals or reactive oxygen species. They bounce around like a pinball, and they destroy sensitive processes. So what biophores do, it floats around in the cytoplasm here. It might be stored in a vacuole. And as these oxidative particles bounce around, they're captured by biophores. And then it breaks down into something the plant can use. It goes right back into the cycle. So if we can maintain efficient photosynthesis, we reduce free radicals, and the plant doesn't make ethylene. Now, we can't always maintain efficient photosynthesis, so BioForge hides in the cell and captures those free radicals. So that's how BioForge works. That's how we turn light energy into yield. So I just said a lot of this, but to recap, reactive oxygen species are the signal. It comes from inefficient use of the sun's energy. You know, you have a lot of atoms and stuff in there. It binds to that. They bounce around in the form of oxygen with an extra energetic electron. So the use of these antioxidants helps neutralize the damage from any of these reactive oxygen species that do form. So this balance is between antioxidant production in the plant, it's part of a natural defense, and the reactive oxygen that's essential for the productive plants and yield preservation. Because reactive oxygen in itself is a signal. So this is the uh, diagram of how we manage that. Now when your free radicals get too high and start to cause stress, we can add antioxidants like BioForge to shift it the other way. So all plant stress could lead to ROS, and that's because of that cellular picture I showed you before. You know, anything that causes inefficiency of photosynthesis will ultimately lead to the generation of reactive oxygen. And that could be anything from light and herbicides. You know, even glyphosate on tolerant um, crops, guys. You know, a tolerant a GMO crop only needs to be 99.9% uh, perfect. So there's a lot of cells in that other 0.1% all have an abundance of ROS. 
So BioForge with herbicide is going to protect photosynthesis. It's the process of photosynthesis that actually generates these species. Of course, there's direct effects, uh, ozone, this comes across, you'll see a band of it near the Mississippi. Uh, drought, very well known. All pathogens, as a pathogen bites, you get inefficient photosynthesis, and then this generates ROS, and anything else, even root nodulation. This is funny on uh, beans. So beans uh, live with the rhizobia, and it's this symbiosis that helps the rhizobia fix nitrogen from the air and put it into the plant. But there's a bacteria. The bacteria is literally biting the plant. That is a stressful time. So BioForge can stop the stress of the symbiosis and make it a better symbiosis. It's going to reduce reactive oxygen, and it's going to stop yield loss. Here is our famous graph. Um, this basically explains the life cycle of the plant. Um, by managing this graph, those of you on the list, I'm looking down the list, you laugh at me because I could talk for 10 hours about this slide. Uh, a keen understanding of this slide is going to help you manage your fields. So if you look here, stage one, two, three, and four are the basic stages of crop production. It's generalized, so we could talk about all crops, not just one or two. But it's this symphony, this hormone symphony, that dictates what's going to happen in the cell. Are we going to initiate a new cell? Are we going to divide? Are we going to size our cells? Are we going to grow old, senesce? What do we need? And it's these key nutrient components that support these stages. So what you'll find Stoller really brings to the table is this use of the right nutrients with the right hormone combinations to manage the symphony. So these are the next part of the slides. Ethylene and ABA can be managed with BioForge. So this is how we stop stress. And we could lower this in all stages to make sure these stages progress normally. Uh, this is a patented model. So uh, yeah, go right on Google Patents and read about it. And then you can shoot us questions. We love talking about our science. Oh, here's a picture of our building. This is uh, Stoller USA. I won't go into the corporate pitch here, but as you know, we have a whole research and development company. And this company is based, uh, it is Stoller, all Stoller scientists. And it's based, it has a lab in the Norman Borlaug Center that, uh, that we work directly with the faculty from Texas A&M University. And it allows our, our scientists a way to interact, you know, very creatively to attend the weekly seminars so that they could stay on the top, the cutting edge of what, of what plant biology really is. Then we have a team of field agronomists. I notice most of them are on the, the webinar right now. And they're able to incorporate a lot of this new science that we create in the university. And uh, they're able to weaponize it, so to speak, so that this can then be uh, this can then be taken to the field where our dealers and farmers can use it. Very proud of that. This is actually what BioForge is doing. If you, you look at the, the, the genes, so this was Dr. Salzman. He's able to go through the, the actual genome of plants. It's all mapped now. This is the type of equipment he has. Spray BioForge and then tell us exactly what genes it's regulating. So these are all direct approaches to stopping stress and how BioForge works. When you spray BioForge, uh, within a day, you're going to see a dramatic increase in all of these genes. And many of these genes are in charge of the plant's natural ability to scavenge oxygen. It's also involved in this ABA management, which is ultimately that death, like ethylene ABA, so we can, we can manage that better. We see increases in photosynthesis so that those thycoloids I talked about, the actual chloroplast, are able to function more efficiently. And it also produces this master gene, so it increases the, the activity of many of the cellular master genes. So BioForge is acting directly on the DNA. This is very unique. Then we measure what it does. So we say that reactive oxygen species is what signals ethylene. So we wanted to make sure we were getting the full chain. So also in the lab, we use gas chromatography. 
on Arabidopsis plants. These are model test plants for plant biology. And we're actually able to spray them and compare them to an untreated control. And we can measure that when you do apply bioforge, you get a reduction in ethylene. So that's really pretty amazing. I got that graph on the next slide. Yes, perfect. So here, these are the, uh, this is the Arabidopsis study that I just talked about. I showed you the pictures before. And as you increase the amount of bioforge, you get a reduction in the amount of ethylene. So this is proof positive that by knocking out that reactive oxygen, you can manage ethylene levels. What's really exciting about this graph, unlike uh, some of the pesticides that are on the market today, is that BioForge doesn't knock out ethylene completely. It more manages ethylene. And those of you who have seen the Jerry's famous YouTube video, I'd encourage you all to go and download it, look it up. He talks about ethylene in terms of our blood pressure. And as many of you know, if our blood pressure goes too high, we're dead. But also, if our blood pressure goes too low, we're dead. So it's really important that our blood pressure is maintained at this level. That's no different than ethylene. Plants, if your ethylene gets too high, you're dead. It's stress. It's a heart attack. Now, if the ethylene in plants gets too low, it might not immediately fall over, but you're going to have a lot of problems with many of the required processes. Ethylene was responsible for many of those flowering traits. So if there was no ethylene in a plant, you'd also get no yield. So what's cool about BioForge, by acting on the signal, it's able to manage stress ethylene without affecting the normal physiological process, unlike many of those ethylene-blocking pesticides that are all coming into the market. Um, our favorite place to be, you'll find, you've got to come to our field days, is the field. Uh, everything we do is then field tested and verified. Uh, this is where you'll find me hiding most of the time. And uh, I'll tell you about some of the results we did there. Now here we were able to do a uh, soybean trial where we grew out some soybeans in the field to validate. And then we used this wind rhizo machine. Uh, this is pretty amazing. It allows you to take pictures of the roots. And then the program can measure the size, the diameter, the area, you name it. So uh, we did some soybeans at the research farm, and then we measured the characteristics of the root system to see what BioForge could do to it. Here, just from the, this was a two ounce per hundred weight, um, but just looking at it, we're able to increase the total length of the roots, and we're able to increase the surface area. So this surface area goes up because we get more of those fine hairs. And as we all know on this call, the fine hairs are where the, the action's going on. That's where the nutrients are absorbed. So uh, I'm pretty excited. We were able to document this increase in root hair and this ultimate increase in surface area. And we talked earlier, you know, some of the bioforge you're going to be putting out as a foliar is going to hit soil. So that soil, the bio, we need a real good surface area, a dense root system, so this all grows into the treated area. So this is why it works so well. And of course, when you have all these great, you know, great characteristics that happen to the plant, you're going to get a yield bump always. So that's your two ounce, just two ounce per, per hundredweight. It's a very reasonable response for such a, a you know, a small, a small investment. So don't insure, be sure with Biofort. Um, we do like to play with all the universities. Uh, we have, I don't we, we rotate or, or fluctuate somewhere between 15 and 20, uh, you know, lab grade PhD scientists on, the, on our staff. And uh, these guys do have some strong connections with some of the universities that uh, we all went to. Um, but, you know, including Illinois, Purdue, Iowa, uh, Kansas State, Jack Fry over there, some great people. So we like to uh, work with the universities to develop our products. And uh, this is Stoller teaching the future, right? We like to do our part to educate the students, too. Working with the universities allows the professors and their graduate students to get some experience in the field to make them more qualified and better when they hit the job market. So we're proud of that, too. 
Um, here's just some independent trials uh, that the Soybean Council did for us. And we were comparing BioForge against another uh, a number of different foliar applied fungicides, insecticides, um, other products, nitrogen. And uh, BioForge here was pretty respectable and significantly increased the yield in bushels per acre. So a single application of BioForge was able to outcompete most of the agronomic management practices that we do in the field all the time. Now, BioForge is not a substitute for a good fertility program, but used with a fertility program, BioForge is going to be an increased yield every time. And this is independent outside data. You can go to this. The full write-up of this study is on uh, the, their website. So BioForge, uh, some of you have heard the, the claims we make that BioForge makes the plant make its own water. Yes, that's right. I'll say it again. BioForge helps the plant make its own water. So this is a loaded statement. <clears throat> what BioForge is doing is increasing the photosynthesis. It's increasing the efficiency of the plant cell. It's increasing this transfer inside the plant. So when plants are healthy and growing, they make root exudates. So when you have a healthy plant, you have a healthy root system, you have healthy xylem and phloem, and because of that, you're going to have a moist root ball. The plant has to exude ions and liquids to then intake fertilizer. And we see this, and we've, I have a whole presentation on this if you're interested. Maybe we could do it around drought time on one of, the, uh, on one of these webinars. But this is pretty, pretty cool. That's why it works so well, to protect the plants from drought. It's able to recycle the water inside the plant so that plant can remain healthy, happy, and alive until the rain returns. So it's, it's a race. Life is a race. Uh, if it rains tomorrow and I needed it today, I'm dead. But if I could get by till just tomorrow, I'll recover. So this here was a V4 foliar application uh, with a herbicide. And we're just looking at the effects of headline, bioforge versus an untreated control at this application rate or application timing, uh, one pint to the acre. Look at percent wilting here, 0 to 70. You know, 100% wilt is uh, beyond field capacity. It's the no return point. Uh, and then different plants would have different, uh, different points of last, of last well, being alive anyway. But here the check, the untreated control, always had more wilting than either of the treated plants, either the BioForge or the Headline. So here, you'll see that BioForge and Headline behaved very similarly in terms of preventing drought. And BioForge being a, uh, a fertilizer, an antioxidant, you know, that's safe for the environment, versus uh, registered pesticides, which have potential off-target effects that we're not concerned with, or we're not, we're not necessarily, we don't know. So here, BioForge is able to compete with commercial pesticides in reducing wilting. And this is good because BioForge is never going to create a resistant fungus. Whereas if we overuse fungicides, we could lose the effectiveness of that tool. So we have to be really careful about that. So BioForge is a way to get a, a more productivity during drought without using pesticides that could cause fungicide resistance. And this is a long-term real effect. Oh, this is from Dr. Robertson up at Iowa. And uh, this is where we first discovered that this low-rate multiple approach is pretty powerful. So I was saying earlier that if you're only going to spray once, you go with a pint. That's the full labeled rate. But if you have the opportunity to split it into multiple applications, like a seed treatment, a V4, and a fungicide, you're able to get a dramatic effect that's because BioForge, being an antioxidant, you know, it's going to stop oxidative stress and it'll naturally decline in that concentration inside the cell. So by using a little bit multiple times, you get a higher effective concentration for longer. So it's not that the one pint uh, is not going to give you a response, but it's we can get an even better response. Um, all of these application timings, C treatment, V4 herbicide, tassels with a fungicide, 
all of these uh, bars were standardized by rate so that we weren't looking at a dose response. We were looking at a, a, a low rate response, a multiple low rate response. So a single seed treatment in this environment, we did get a, a small increase in yield. Now, if we went at the herbicide, just a single application, we got a noticeable increase in yield. So this was, this was pretty nice. Uh, this is because of all the stress with the herbicide. You know, we stopped that stress, and you obviously got more bushels. So BioForge was preserving the genetic potential of the plant. Good defense, right? Now, just by extending this that much longer, by doing half and half, we got a big increase. And if we did it three times, a third, a third, a third, we got a really big increase. So this is effectively extending the useful life of these chemicals inside the plant cell. You know, they're protected in there from the environment. So when stress comes along, reactive oxygen goes up, and our BioForge is there to the rescue. So thank you, Dr. Robertson. It's always a pleasure. So BioForge, in summary, how are you going to use it? It's flexible. Um, our products are flexible. They're all developed uh, for different application strategies because we know different farmers do different things. So it can go as an inferro, as a seed treatment. Uh, I've used it as a side dress. We all use it as a foliar, particularly with herbicides. Um, Larry there from the pivot, uh, he uses it through the pivot. That was the circle with the spider mites. And then you start to get into our horseshoe. Uh, Kirk, Mike, Rick, Mize, all you guys, you're using it extensively through the drip. So it's compatible. This is what it's, it's developed for. BioForge mixes with anything. I've never had a problem. It will manage stress and preserve yield potential. Um, some of the better rates, if you really want to show off, mix it with your herbicide or mix it with hail or, or apply it after hail damage. You know, and, and these things, you'll have a farmer for life. Um, the best way to use it, if you have the option, is to use lower rates, uh, never below four ounces, multiple times. And then, like most of our other products, all of our products are formulated to be easy at this 16 ounce per acre rate. That's our max rate, roughly equivalent to the one liter per hectare. So uh, everything's formulated for that. When in doubt, that's a good rate to use. There is a BioForge ST. This is formulated just as a seed treatment for all you seed treaters out there. Uh, it does have the diformal. Uh, it just has a stronger concentration so that you don't need as much liquid. We, we know that there, real estate's expensive on a seed. We can only fit, what, eight ounces, maybe 10 ounces to, to a bushel. So this helps you fit more stuff on it. We also put humic acid in there. Uh, the humic acid really aids in uh, micronutrient uptake. Humic is a liquid carbon, and this helps to dissolve some of the nutrients, you know, metals and stones in the, plant, in the field, and get them into the plant. So ST is different because it's has this aid of micronutrient, and it's also stronger, so you don't need as much. Um, it is compatible with other plant protectants, uh, Acceleron, you name it, and uh, it's going to noticeably aid root development and aid in nodulation. So similar to BioForge makes plants make its own water, it's these exudates, these secretions that come out of the roots. BioForge increases that. Those secretions are actually the food of the nodules. So it can stop the stress from the little bacteria biting it, and it can increase the amount of food the plant feeds the bacteria. So all in all, you get a lot more nitrogen out of those nodules. And that's uh, formulated for this two ounce per hundred weight. So ST and BioForge, there's their summary. In terms of our crop, you know, when do you really want to use it? Uh, this is corn. There's no bad time to use it. So uh, any time that you're expecting stress, season long, put it out there. Um, as a management, as a, as a plan, like a, a program, I like to put it out early, get it out there as a seed treatment or in furrow in case I get some damage here. Right now I'm looking out my window in Texas and, you know, there's cruise ships floating by. It's so flooded. So if you look around here, that BioFord seed treatment or in furrow will protect against early season floods or some, you know, or, well, that's typically here. It'll help stop hail. So when the hail breaks the plant, the, the plant's going to be ready for it right around here. 
Come in at the herbicide, maybe. Herbicides are stressful. Good time for bioforge. So, or even here, when we're starting to get into all the drought, this is when what? The oven turns on, right? The rain turns off, the oven turns on. So bioforge might have a place right here, too. So that's when we use it. You know, similarly on, uh, on soybean, you know, you could basically treat those crops very similar. Uh, we go early, you know, just in case we need to stop something. But then we can also use it to manage some of the stress later in the season. Uh, once we get later, oh, I want to talk to you about the beauty of some of these late season applications. But that's not for this webinar. I'll talk forever. But die will kill me. So here we go.